Good evening friends. This side Rahul Mangan here is a group chief executive officer at Treasury Consulting and also a venture capitalist. Standing today on 13th October 2019, we are going to be speaking a pretty important topic about the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code of India. But before that, I would like to have my opinion. I uh, would like to tell you a story about Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. I started my company in July 2016 with Treasury Consulting LLP and around 3-4 months from here, uh, roughly somewhere right closer to that, we being invited by the Institute of Corporate Affairs. Now it's a body which is being set by the government of India and I think it is, it is uh, basically relatively very far from Delhi, right? You know, now what happened when we and the meeting was in the office of SFIO, Serious Fraud, Fraud Investigation Office that is in New Delhi. Now uh, when I entered in, into the building of the Serious Fraud Investigation Office, I got to know that how come people are able to do so many frauds in India, but anyways that is a different thing. So when we entered in the, into the meeting, I was as usual the youngest person in the meeting. In most of the meetings and the conferences, I am the youngest one. You know, and what did happen is that during the meeting, I was surrounded by a secretary level person of Ministry of Corporate Affairs and at the same point of time, uh, I was surrounded by very famous personalities uh, in India. I don't want to mention one by one. They were all discussing with each other. Actually, the purpose of that meeting is that how we would be launching the valuation game, uh, basically the valuation course for the participant of the insolvency and who pa basically passed the IBC certificate, you know, and uh, so that we can we can let them know how exactly the valuation happened. I was very, very surprised to know that such kind of program should be part and parcel of the insolvency and bankruptcy court examination. India is a very different country. India is a country who first make the law and then they continue to do the changes in the law. It is just like a GST. Now in Singapore, you buy this or this iPhone or anything or laptop, you are subject to 7% GST. In Canada, it is, I think, 9%. I might be wrong. You know, in US, you have a different percentage. And in, in different parts of the globe, you have a different percentage. You know, but in Singapore, if you buy, this is 7%, this is 7%, this is 7%, this is 7%, whatever you buy. You know, it is all 7%. But the problem here is that we first made the GST, every day there are changes happening in the GST, every day and the chartered accountants are confused. Similarly in this meeting, I was more or less silent, silent in the sense like because I wanted to give my opinion to those people, those who are technically correct people. In India, the problem is that most of the people, those who are sitting at the senior designation, they are not technically correct. I know uh, they will feel sad what I'm saying, but that's a reality. Majority of the CFOs in India, chief financial officers actually don't deserve to be chief financial officers. And the end result is Suzlon. You know, you have ILFS, which is Divan Housing. You have Mal Satyam. You have uh, PWC. You have uh, Yes Bank and all and all. The list is pretty long. Around two years before, I got a chance to meet with the CEO, chief executive officer of Suzlon in one of the conferences where he asked one of the questions from that person that sir, where do you see the future of Suzlon and especially in the renewable space, you are taking huge amount of debt in your books and please don't mind, you need to pay that debt. It is not that you need not to pay that debt. He tell me that one day Suzlon will be in the news. He was right. Actually, Suzlon is in the news, but now the news is that Suzlon is more or less moving towards bankruptcy. So another renewable player in India is moving towards bankruptcy. We already know that renewable capacity in India is continuously falling down. And now because of the Andhra Pradesh government, it will further fall down. But coming back to the topic, we are actually a country who really, who really invite the people, those who are very senior in the designation, but knowledge level, knowledge level is very poor. You know, just like RBI governor, just like Usha Tharod. There are multiple MM Khan from RBI. I challenge them right now. If they feel that they are pretty good, comfortable, technically competent people in FX, come and talk. Now today we got an article in that, in this, it is saying that, you know, that bankruptcy watchdog IBBI seeks views on the new regulatory framework for valuation profession. Indian valuation course is obsolete. 
कंप्लीट ऑप्शली द वे द वट यू आर टीचिंग टू द पीपल इन द इंडियन वैल्युएशन कोर्स इज एक्चुअली डू नॉट रिक्वायर बाय द इंडस्ट्री द वर्ल्ड इज एट बिग फोर द वर्ल्ड इज एट आई एफ आर एस नाइन सिंगापुर ऑलरेडी एट आई एफ आर एस नाइन इफेक्टिव फर्स्ट जनवरी टू थाउजेंड एंड एटीन एंड दे आर प्रिपेयरिंग वेरी हार्ड एज फार एज अमेंडमेंट इन द आई एफ आर एस नाइन इज कंसर्न बट वट इज द प्रॉब्लम द प्रॉब्लम वी हैव इन इंडिया इन द वैल्युएशन कोर्स विच इज नोन एज सी वी ओ यू नो देर आर मल्टीपल सी वी ओस विच वी हैव इन लाइक यू हैव इन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ चार्ट अकाउंट ऑफ इंडिया यू हैव यू नो इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कॉस्ट अकाउंट एंड इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कंपनी सेक्रेटरी एंड आई बींग पार्ट ऑफ मोस्ट ऑफ दम एंड वेन आई इन इंडिया आई गिव दम द ट्रेनिंग इज वेल बट द कोर्स करिकुलम विच इज एक्चुअली डिफाइंड इज प्रेडी ऑप्सलीट pretty pretty obsolete and this course curriculum is nowhere letting people know that how exactly the valuation has to be done so i am going to be taking this article like whatever is mentioning in this article i have said two to three years before in the same meeting but as usual today i am 35 three years before i was 32 i was youngest i been discarded in this meeting overruled by the so called intelligent people had it been not the scene then today insolvency and bankruptcy court of india should not went into the public domain and seek the public opinion about the changes in the valuation course if you thinking i will give the opinion to insolvency and bankruptcy court definitely not i am just going to be shooting this video and letting you know that what is the present position of insolvency and bankruptcy court well before starting this topic i also would like to let you know that you agree disregard you put the thumbs down on the on the left hand side of the youtube it doesn't make a difference right because according to me insolvency and bankruptcy court in india is a utter failure around thousands of people who passed out the insolvency and bankruptcy court and still remember one and half year before when whenever i used to visit the facebook the only thing i used to see that people used to upload the certificate they received from ibbi insolvency and bankruptcy board of india that i am an insolvency practitioner and if you just ask them one question that what is the difference between contingent consideration and uh, contingent uh, liability they will say that we do not know around 99% of the people those who passed out ibc and the valuation courses under these three different institute do not know the difference between contingent exposures and and contingent consideration forget earn out you would be surprised to know that the valuation of the earn out asset and the earn out liability is still a gray area in india except three or four people in the industry around no one knows how to value the earn out soon we would be one of them and the biggest problem we have in the earn out is that the chartered accountant institute the cost accountant and the company secretary institute the three top institute they together do not want to enter into this area i give you in writing look at the revised course of the chartered accountant institute we have look at the revised course of the cost accountant institute we have and anywhere any sentence any line if you get to know that how exactly the you know i would say the honor to accounting is happening i'll let you know and if you open the books of any us based group like excel genpack accenture cognizant could be microsoft google facebook and all you often found earn out but who is actually doing the work of earn out in india which is very important in valuation term is a big force except big force no one doing and because these institute do not teach their people and more importantly the the, the the members of the institute also not interested to learn that that is more important thing than the pointing finger on the institute this business is predominantly being captured by the big force right so if we come back to this article it will tell you the harsh reality that the insolvency and back bankruptcy professional are just like any other person is running towards a degree and i really doubt that how many people those who took the certificate how many of them are actually getting the work on the valuation like i tell you that i was in one of the trainings provided by one of these three institute at chandigarh you know uh, around 2 3 months before when i was in india and i ask a simple question that you know what are the different types of contingent exposures we have and how stand by letter of credit is a contingent exposure and also on balance sheet exposure well 99% of the people those who are watching this video will definitely do not know the meaning of the stand by letter of credit and 1 2% know the meaning of stand by letter of credit they do not know that how come stand by letter of credit it's an off and on balance sheet exposure both 
Now it is just like a multicolor pen. Now this is a unicolor pen. Now unicolor pen means it's a black pen. I love black color, so use lot, lot, you know, many times use black pen. But but there are pens who come with the multicolor. Generally, teachers who checking the examination papers are using the multicolor pens because multicolor pens are used for the people those who do not want to carry the few pens. So rather than carrying two pens, blue, black, or red, you carry one pen. That is the reality. We have multicolor pens. So can can I say that we have pen who can have three colors or more than three colors under one pen? And now what happened in the pen technology? You have the the brightener also. The sorry, brightener come the pointer. So at the rather than you have four colors in the pen, at the top you have the pointer. So you pick it up, do this point, and just club it, and just pin out. Your job is over. Similarly. Similarly, standby letter of credit is an on balance sheet exposure and also an off balance sheet exposure. But can I have one book, one book in India which is being taught by any faculty, one course in India which is taught by any faculty, and forget India, the any so called courses like Chartered Financial Institute, C sorry, Chartered Financial Analyst, and FRM, Faltu Risk Management, who will tell you that these things actually exist. Because what we are reading in the valuation is completely obsolete. Completely obsolete. It is definitely not required. And nowhere. No, and if you cross the India border and specifically go to Singapore, Hong Kong, it's it's nowhere required. Now let's look at that, and you will get the hard reality how exactly this country works. It's been around three years to the insolvency code, and now you are revamping the ins insolvency code. And when a 32 year old person told you initially that the code which you designed is wrong, and this is not the only mistake. I let you know a lot of mistakes about the insolvency code. Now the the article looks like that. The Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India has sought public comments for the total revamp of the way professionals assess the worth of the business are regulated. Excuse me. Why are you taking public inputs? Where are your experts? Where is Institute of Corporate Affairs? Where is Ministry of Corporate Affairs? Where are these two or three ladies who 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 was in the meeting and who were who was showing that they they are the masters of valuation? Where are the professors of various institutes who were invited in this meeting? And why are you looking for public inputs now? Where are your experts? Why did you spend thousands of dollars, thousands of Indian rupees, and maybe lakhs of Indian rupees paid to these people wrote the manuals? Because now you, after three years, understood that the manuals being wrote by these people are actually nothing but the radhi, and now you are looking for a public opinion. And what is the guarantee that this public opinion matters? Is public is an idiot? And why public should give you an give you an opinion? Let me know. Is it public is free to give you an opinion? These people, those who know nothing, only sitting at the and a senior designation like a person I know sitting at Institute of Corporate Affairs, right? Which is an Indian body. He got several lakhs and several thousands of rupees while writing a manual for insolvency and bankruptcy code. Okay, and now this is this is Radhi. You are asking input from public because it is free. Wow. This is absolute stunning, and this can only happen in one country, and the name of that country in India. Because had it been Singapore, they would have first delist all these experts from their panel. Number one step, they would have removed people from insolvency and bankruptcy board the way they changed the management of the Tamas Capital, and then they would have invited the public comments. This is how actually Singapore work. But I'm sure that not a senior person who gave the orders or the Uh, purchasing orders to write this manual was asked to go. Not a single person asked to go. The more important things come now. The bankruptcy watchdog notice inviting comments suggestions the government idea to go for a radical recast of the way valuation professional are currently regulated. Radical recast. When I told you in the meeting that we need the earn out accounting, we need the contingent consideration, we need the contingent accounting, we need the high end derivatives. Did you look at the valuation course? Did you look at the valuation course? Does it tell you about range accruals? Does it tell you about options? Does it tell you about range forward? Does it tell you about Siegel? 
does it tell you about straddle it tells you about ladder it tells you about reverse ladder vertical integration diagonal integration you would be if you are a so called bankruptcy expert you would be thinking that all these words are not required but my dear friends infrastructure leasing and financial services divan housing they have lot of structured notes in their books and you cannot value these structured notes unless you unless you know that structured products are coming in the books of every company open your eyes and see open your eyes and see that today the company who actually owns 100% of the of the vwork india is raising roughly 200 million dollar in the indian market 200 million dollar is roughly 1400 crores 1400 is raising actually 200 million dollar in the form of the structured note so neither it's a debt nor it's an equity now this company is a live company if they are raising 1400 crore in the form of structured note it means it has some valuation principles interpretation issue no interpretation issue are we teaching these valuation principles to the bank to to the people those who are do, doing the insolvency in bankruptcy code and followed by they they do these valuation courses are we doing that i really doubt we we teach them and they themselves are not interested that's a more important thing they are interested in passing the examinations and get a certificate because we know that you agree or disregard that's your problem that india as a country is a is a i would say india as a country is a certificate oriented country we love certificates we accumulate certificates we love to say that i have 35 certificates but we really do not courage to say that i have two certificates and i have knowledge i always say i have only two certificates one is my graduation degree which is bca and one is is my post post graduation degree which is mba and after that i did no certification i can easily crack cfa i can easily crack frm when i can make models on on derivatives i can crack them in first course but i will never do these certification because if i enter into the war of the certification then i would be like them but these people most of the people in india are actually running before the certifications they wanted to accumulate as maximum as certification as possible throughout their lifetime now if we move further we get to know insolvency and bankruptcy code wanted to know the right qualification and the model for the education of the valuation professional wait 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 what do you mean by the right qualification what is right qualification is it again a certification you are entering into i am mba i can do you are bcom you cannot do what is right valuation uh, right qualification more than the right qualification the most important thing is the right content and updated content that's more important that is more important my dear friends do we know that there is a company called coinflex coinflex has decided to came with the derivatives on the libra although libra is currently in the news for the negative reason because three top uh, out of four three players those who back libra are already exited that's a different thing and i agree that the basic premise behind the libra was not correct but do we know that coinflex wanted to launch the derivatives on li on libra which is libra future libra future this is where actually we are heading this is the where the world is heading but forget cryptocurrency if in this course if you talk about crypto then p then you need a permission from reserve bank of india and the intelligence of the reserve bank of india is clearly demonstrated in the bis tunnel survey when in in not a single indicator uh, uh, inr passed and the recently released world economic forum global competitiveness report does suggest that india rank is at 69 india fell by 10 more points in the competitive index and singapore once again the number one economy but these things actually do not matter these things do not matter what map matter is that we have made a mind mindset that the people those who are sitting at the top or at the helm of the insolvency and bankruptcy code actually they are the rightest person to decide our future except them no one can decide our future now the joke starts here currently the valuation conducted valuation are conducted by the variety of professional from the from the diverse discipline including civil engineers architect lawyers and merchant bankers IBPI have also asked his communication seeking comments on whether it would be better to to encourage individual or organization in the market for the valuation then why do you launch the valuation course why you make it mandatory under the company act why you did that 
Why did you create three different organizations in the three different institutes which is ICAI, ICSI and ICMAI? Why so many people now have the degree which values nothing? They even do not know that what is the difference between the standby letter of credit and the direct pay letter of credit and that's a fact. Most of the bankers, if you don't trust me, you go to your nearest bank branch. You go to your nearest bank branch and just ask the bank manager a question. Hey, can I have a question please? What's the difference between SPLC and DPLC? He will look at you like you ask him, hey, can I marry with your wife please? He will look like that. Because this would, this would be the first time he would have heard about that. This is the first time he would, he would have heard about these terms standby and the DPLC. And look at the course of the Institute of Chartered Accountant of India or any other course. Look at CFA, Chartered Oblique Certified Financial Analyst. Are they talking anything about DPLC? How to price DPLC? The joke actually starts from here when the new regulatory architecture will seek to streamline and bring, bring more discipline into the valuation of business including financial asset, land, building, plant, machinery as well. Wait. Including the valuation of business, okay, financial assets, land, buildings, plant and machinery as well as intellectual property rights, goodwill. Hey, 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 wait, 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 where is earnout? Where is earnout? Where is contingent considerations? Where is contingent assets and contingent liabilities? Where are exotic derivatives? Where are crypto? And where are the valuation of the venture capital? Today a company like Flipkart, uh, sorry, Paytm claims to be over 18 billion dollar company. Oyo is claimed to be a roughly a 10, 10 odd billion dollar company. Where is the valuation of uh, venture capitalist? Around thousands of startups die every year in India. But the bloody corrupt media will always focus on actually the Vijay Shekhar Sharma, Sachin Bansal, Bini Bansal, Ritesh Agarwal and Bhavesh Agarwal. Few five, six people, right? But we do not know that these companies, startup companies who actually took the funding from the VC and die, they lost and the VC need to compute whatever valuation they left with, right? Which is nothing but the dirty valuation. Is it you teaching or not? That's the first important thing. And more importantly, let me ask one important thing. What are you teaching in accounting, right? Is it the person who is doing the valuation should not know IFRS 9? Is it he should not know IFRS 3, IFRS 13, IFRS 7 and IFRS 3 more importantly. We are teaching him the business of the valuation of business but IFRS 3 which is business combinations is not being taught. IFRS is not being taught and the most basic premise of IFRS which is IFRS 3 which is the business combination is not being taught by the so called IBBI. But we expect, always believe that the people, those who are sitting at the IBBI are actually doing justice to our career. But if they are doing justice to your career, they are, they are here inviting and now the job is here. The new regulatory framework for valuation principle will cover all type of businesses, valuation including merger and acquisition involving healthy entities, not just valuation of insolvency company for bankruptcy reason. Is it, the, is it the world of the valuation is limited to these? If the valuation is limited to these, then how come people, how, who is computing the valuation of Paytm? Interpretation or no, no interpretation issue. Who is computing the valuation of Lenskart? Who is giving 10 billion valuation to OYO? Who reduced the valuation or uh, valuation of the WeWork from 47 billion dollars to roughly 3 point or th between 3 to 4 billion dollars? Who did that? Tell me, who did that? Is it IBBI Insolvency Bank, Bankruptcy Court did that? Then why can't we have these things in our course? We need to understand one thing to wind up this discussion is that valuation is an ever increasing subject. Valuation is a subject which cannot be covered within one lifespan like a derivative contract. So everything cannot be covered in the valuation but the course which you are offering has to be holistic in nature. 
and most importantly the mistake which insolvency and bankruptcy code is doing by forcing people to do the valuation rather we should make it optional that if you do it okay if you don't do it okay and more importantly according to me this course should be discarded rather it should be part and parcel of the ibc certificate so an ibc certificate should not be objective type rather it has to be a written test complete throughout 100% and in which you supposed to ask the tough question so that you 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 let person feel that he don't deserve that certificate and the pass percentage has to be 1% according to me the pass percentage of the insolvency in bankruptcy court should be less than 1% somewhere half percent so that if 100 people sitting say 1000 people sitting then not more than 5 people will get that certificate so that all five those who get that certificate will get lot of revenue and respect See, revenue and respect will come only when less people will have that degree. But once you make this degree to everybody, then the respect will go. That's a fact. Like nuclear science. Why we still have a respect for the nuclear science in, in the eyes of most of the people? Because it is not easy. Learning nuclear science is pretty tough. It's a very difficult topic to comprehend. Space science, space technologies, robotics. Why these people have a lot of respect in the eyes, foreign exchange derivatives people? Because it's not easy. But we have decided one thing that the certificate which we are offering, forget easy or, or what we need to give to everybody. And because of this, now insolvency and bankruptcy court who spent lakhs of rupees in making manual, now they are actually looking to have public opinion because public opinion in this country is always free. And I'm telling you the way we are moving in, in the direction like every second day there is a case which is coming about insolvency. I don't know how much justice we are doing to the insolvency and bankruptcy court. And last but not the least in the two more minutes now the government has decided to do the e-auctioning or the e-bidding of the assets. Basically the operational creditors when they decided they don't want it to go ahead they wanted to wind it up. And the committee of creditors COC is in sync with that. Now they wanted to do the e-bidding. You do you, if you have 1% trust left on me, when I was 32 and when I attended this meeting, I gave an idea that you should have one centralized place like you have Sybil, an individual score about his credit worthiness, Sybil. You should have one such place wherein you should have the repository of the e-bidding of the assets so that any private equity player, any you know, the private equity or the asset player like Brookfield, Blackstone, they can come forward and buy that. How much time and energy Brookfield and Blackstone need to spend nowadays when they need to uh, go to company by company and get to know which company assets are on sale and what is the valuation? What would if we have a one platform and everything will come on that platform? That I proposed three years ago in this meeting but as I said I was 32 in most of the meeting I am the youngest. I was 32 I was outplayed but it doesn't matter. I'm happy because I'm outplayed. That is the reason that this article is there. That is the reason that these people, those who are sitting at the helm of the insolvency and bankruptcy court, got thousands of crore, thousands of rupees as a salaries, but at the end they are again coming to public. Well, I have a lot to speak about insolvency and bankruptcy court, and we would be shooting a lot of videos about CIRP, corporate insolvency resolution plan, and so many things soon. As now we have enough infrastructure in place. But at the end, I would like to let you know one thing very clearly that the way we are heading in the insolvency and bankruptcy court, rather than resolving the issue, we will mess it up soon. And this is happening. Well, when insolvency and bankruptcy court was launched, we were having limited cases in that. Now the cases are humongous. Humongous. With this, we thank you very much. Uh, but before, should, before moving, I, I would like to let you know we have already launched our WhatsApp newsletter. It is very well available on our fixed income platform, which is www.fixedincome.global. You go down at the footer, you will see a link called WhatsApp newsletter. In there, every day we, we share one newsletter and few updates. And you know that we are not this corrupt media who will share the updates like that. You know my mobile number, which is plus nine one. 9899242978 you know our fixed income platform www.fixedincome.global have a great time and uh, talk soon